You know, there's nothing worse than landing short, especially in the forest or a mountain terrain where you cannot recover your quad. That's not a good day. Today we're going to talk about how to avoid that, how to manage your power of your battery to make sure you have enough power to land back at the home point when you make that crazy long range flight. I'll share with you what I know about monitoring the power in your battery pack on long range flights. Hi everybody, Mike here. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to talk about something different. We're going to talk about power management for your long range quad. And we'll talk about why this is important to know about and how to manage. Quite often I'm flying over some very rough terrain. So I need to make sure that I have enough battery power to make sure that I get back to the home point. Just a couple of disclaimers here. You may hear me talking some slang once in a while. So you might hear me say once in a while amps when I really mean milliamp hours. There are two indicators that you really need to monitor during your flight. One of them is voltage, the other is the amps or the milliamps used. Let's talk about voltage for a little bit. Voltage is what turns your motors. When your batteries are fresh, you have lots of voltage, they turn very powerful. The first thing you always want to do before you start flying is check that your battery is full. Know what the full voltage level is for the particular battery pack you're flying. Always check that before you take off. There's nothing worse than starting out with a half empty pack. That would be a disaster. As the flight progresses, your voltage will drop over time. At the end of the flight, you'll reach a point where you have insufficient voltage to keep the motors turning at a sufficient RPM to keep the quad in the air. Once again, the goal is to land before you reach this low voltage level and you can no longer fly. Of course, what that magic voltage number is depends on the build of your quad, the weight, the props that you use, the prop pitch, the battery pack you use and all that. But for a given quad, you're going to learn what that magic number is. You can fly until X volts. That's what you need to figure out. For example, I'm flying lithium ion batteries, custom made packs. These charge fully at 4.2 volts per cell. And the cells that I'm using, most of them, I can actually fly down to 3 volts and actually about 2.75 volts per cell. It's, and it's still safe to get them that low. If you're flying the lithium polymer packs, those have a bottom voltage of around 3.5 volts in that area. So you need to be aware of what your minimum voltage amount is, how safely you can lower the cells. If you go online, you can often find the manufacturer's data sheet about the battery cells you're using, and it will show you the curve of the draw of the voltage for the battery. The typical voltage discharge for a lithium ion cell is this sort of sideways S curve. It starts off very high at full voltage. It drops immediately after takeoff. It remains pretty consistent during the flight until you get towards the battery pack being low. And then the voltage drops off rapidly here on the right end. This sudden drop off at the end here, we call it going over the shoulder. And once you start going over the shoulder and the voltage starts dropping off fast, depending on your build, you may only have one minute of flight time remaining or perhaps even a few seconds. Not much time to get it down. The other indicator of your battery pack is how much power it has how much flying time you have, and that's the amps used. This effectively is how long this curve is, how long this S curve is of voltage from left to right. If you have a low amp pack, say maybe a thousand milliamps, this line is very short in time. Maybe you can only fly for five minutes. If you have a lot more milliamps, a larger pack, larger capacity, this line will be longer from left to right over time. And maybe you can fly for eight minutes or 10 minutes. Voltage is what keeps your props turning. Amperage will determine how long your props will turn. What I do whenever I build a brand new quad, I set it up with a certain set of motors, props, battery pack, and then I do test lights and I document both the voltage and the amperage used. What I recommend you do is you record your OSD screen and you make sure you have these elements. You need to have total pack voltage, average cell voltage, your milliamp hour meter, very important. You can also have this motor draw, this amp draw, Fly the flight, make sure you record your screen. Later on when you get home, review the video and plot this out, perhaps in an Excel spreadsheet. Plot out the time, plot out the voltage, plot out the milliamps used, and you'll get graphs like these. For this particular pack that I flew, you can see how it pretty much follows the sideways S-curve for the voltage. The shoulder where it drops off is readily apparent at the far right here. During this test, I flew pretty consistent. Look how the 
amp usage is pretty much a straight line during the entire flight. Some people will say that you need to monitor only voltage during the flight, and that's all you need to know about. I'm of the school that I want to monitor both voltage and the amps consumed, and I'll explain why. These batteries have a unique characteristic that when you turn off the draw from the battery, the voltage will actually recover shortly thereafter. You'll see the voltage go back up if you stop drawing on a battery. The same thing happens during the flight of your quad. If you're pushing the motors hard, the voltage is going to drop. But if you back off on the throttle, if you back off on the current amp usage, the battery will actually recover during the flight and the voltage might just stabilize at a certain level or it might even rise. Right here during this test flight, I started off flying hard, the voltage dropped, and then I backed off on the throttle and I flew it easy for a while and the voltage actually recovered and went back up. And looking at this curve here, you can see the voltage go down and then it recovers at a spot here and it also recovers at a spot here and then it flattens out pretty much and it recovers at a spot here also. These are times when I eased off the throttle, I eased off the draw of the batteries and the cells actually recovered their voltage slightly during the flight. The point I'm trying to make is that the voltage not only will go down during a flight, but there may be times that it might go up. It depends on how hard you're working the cell or not. But that can be misleading. You may think you have more voltage than you really have, whereas the amp draw from the battery is pretty much consistent during that same flight. I find that I prefer to look at the average cell voltage rather than the entire pack. For me, in my mind, it's easier to keep track of numbers like 4 volts, 3.5, 3 volts, 2.75. And also, if I switch between a 5S pack or a 6S pack or a 4S pack, I'm still dealing with the same thresholds. I don't have to worry about the total number changing. So I always look at the average cell voltage. The other thing that I monitor during the flight is the milliamp hours consumed. This number starts out at zero when you power on your quad and it builds and climbs over time. This is your gas gauge. In your car, your gas gauge goes down. This is the opposite. It starts out at zero and it counts up to how much you've consumed. I have found over time by monitoring my batteries, by plotting the voltage, by plotting the amps, that for my lithium ion packs that I make, that I can fly for about 85, 86% of the rated amperage before I start hitting that shoulder where the voltage starts dropping. So what I do is I try to target all my flights to be landed by about 85 or 86 percent of the rated capacity of the amperage. And that usually gives me just the right amount of margin to land. So during the flight, we're looking at both the voltage during the flight. We're watching that and we know we have to land by a certain target. In my case here, I need to land between 3 volts and 2.75. My goal is to be on the ground by 2.75 volts when I fly these lithium ion packs of mine. And anything lower than that, there just won't be sufficient RPMs to keep the quad in the air. Anything lower than that, you risk damaging the cells. The other thing that I watch is the milliamp hours used. So in my particular setup, I've got the total pack voltage up here in the upper left. That's what I check at the beginning of the flight and make sure I have a full pack. And then at the 9 o'clock position, I have the individual cell voltage. This is the milliamp hours drawn. This is the gas gauge. I closely monitor that as well. On the lower left here, this is the spontaneous amp draw. This is how hard the motor and the entire system is working at any moment in time. Here it's expressed in amps. And you'll see the numbers fluctuate from like 5 amps, 3 amps, to 12 amps, 15 amps, or even up to 30. This varies with quad to quad and how big your motors are and your props are. And it also varies during the flight, how hard you push this thing and how much you're drawing the batteries. You look at batteries and they have a certain C rating. That's what this is talking about. How much, how fast can you draw the power out of the batteries? For my particular build that I'm flying here, if I'm flying nice and easy, I'm, I'm flying at about 12 to 15 amps. That's my most optimal speed and draw. If I'm pushing it hard, and it'll peak up to around 30 in that ballpark. And the other indicator down here is how many milliamps used per distance. We'll talk about that a little bit later. I have found that when flying my long range flights, the best flight plan is to start out flying hard at the beginning of the flight. Fly up that mountain, fly out that far distance when you have lots of voltage and lots of amps to use. Get to the top of that mountain, do your flying around, and then start flying back home start heading downhill, descending. Your motor draw will be less, there'll be less load on your batteries, and your voltage will start climbing back in your packs. 
If you do the opposite, where you fly down into a valley and then your voltage drops in your pack over time and you have to climb to get back up to your home point, you're going to see your voltage drop off really fast as you push those motors. And it's possible you could get in a situation that your voltage drops so low that your, your quad will just drop out of the sky. So try to plan your flights if you can so that you're pushing it hard at the beginning of the flight and the end of your flight is easier on your motors and easier on your battery pack. We'll fly our flights and I'll know in my head beforehand at certain waypoints how much voltage I should have per cell and how many milliamp hours I should have consumed. I know when I'm supposed to turn around and start heading back. You'll sometimes hear in my videos, okay, this is where we need to turn around at. We need to turn around at this amount of amps or that amount of amps or that amount of voltage. I've got my meter set up to start blinking when I hit 4,000 on my 6,000 pack for total amps used. And I've also got it set up to start blinking the voltage when the average voltage goes down below 3.0 for this particular set of cells. In this case, I'm below my 3.0 voltage per cell and I'm well below my pack usage. It's telling me, come on man, let's land. So take a look at this battery plot here. This is one of my first packs that I built and some of my first test flights. What do you notice about this? The total milliamp hours used for my OSD is around 6600. However, the battery pack only has a maximum of 6000 milliamp hours capacity. That tells me that my meter, my milliamp meter, was off. It was wrong. If it's not accurate, then you can't trust the milliamp meter. We'll show you how to calibrate these meters in another video or two. So when you get your meters all calibrated and dialed in, you can start relying on them during your flights. You know the characteristics of your batteries, you know how to plan your flight, then you're going to have enough power to get back home safely. Hey, I hope we learned something today together. Thanks for watching.